Dominicans want to prepare for Hurricane Irma, even if the weather system is about a week away. Investor confidence in New Jungle Bay remains high in spite of competition and $250,000 in cash and kind from the main sponsor as Creole Festival promotions intensify. I am Idona John Baptist with the Channel 5 News, back with the details after this. We begin with this warning to Dominicans to prepare in advance of a menacing hurricane which could have catastrophic impact on the islands. The Office of Disaster Management continues to monitor the movement of Hurricane Irma towards the Lesser Antilles. At present, Hurricane Irma is expected somewhere in the central and or northern portion of the island chain late Tuesday into Wednesday next week. This includes Dominica. Irma is expected to strengthen to a major hurricane at that time, making it an extremely dangerous Atlantic hurricane. The hurricane is about six days away from the islands, and uncertainties in projection exist. Nonetheless, all residents are warned to complete all preparations and continue to closely monitor the progress of Irma. The ODM, together with the local med service, will continue to keep the public updated. As a precaution, shelter managers are advised to secure keys to shelters and be prepared to open those shelters when asked to do so by the Office of Disaster Management. All subcommittees should have plans in place in the event of a response to a strike by Irma. Residents should not wait until the final hour to purchase required commodities, that is, dried food and water. In other major developments, investors have already begun buying out villas under construction at Jungle Bay Resort and Spa's new Sufria location. The project is one of six real estate projects approved under the Citizenship by Investment Program. Phase one of the construction started in January and five months after development, the first block of 10 duplex villas was sold. Proprietor of the development, Sam Raphael, took Channel 5 News on a tour at the Mon Akuma site on Thursday. He says investment into the development has been going well, despite the competition with other countries offering citizenship to investors. You're competing out there in a, in a, in a marketplace against other developments, other properties, not just in Dominica, in the Caribbean and globally. So your project, you have to be tight. You have to have a real good product that people will buy. I mean, it's not just the citizenship, huh? That's one aspect. But your product has to be competitive. And I think Jungle Bay, with a proven track record that we have of, of success, the type of following we have, um, I think we, we make a compelling case that we have uh, one of the best value investments in the CBI world. So as a result of that, uh, we've... We, we've been selling the villas and that's been steady. The investment arrangement will mean that an investor would get an individual title to the land and villa. All of those that we see here have been sold. So we're on people's property right now. We're selling these villas to investors mm -hmm. and this villa qualifies them to apply for CBI. So they apply if they are successful in the application process uh, then uh, they become a citizen of Dominica and they own a villa in Jungle Bay. And so Jungle Bay, instead of, as the old Jungle Bay, we owned, the company owned all the accommodations. Now we will be a management company. So we will be managing the villas for these investors and they will get uh, their profits and proceeds from that. And that's the way. So we will split the proceeds and we will maintain it and we will get our cut and they as the owners will get their cut. The starting price for a villa is 255,000 US dollars. Raphael says they continue persistent marketing of the project. So every day we go down and we, we try to market uh, and thanks the government has given us a lot of support, um, not just in, uh, in terms of allowing us to use the CBI program, but even within that, 
they continue to try to find innovative ways to support the, the hotel development and so on that's under the program in very specific ways. Most recently, they've, they've come out and they've done some. They recognize, you know, that the private sector growth is the sustainable job uh, creating uh, area that, that, that additional efforts need to be placed in. So we're pleased with that. So overall, I would say every day you come in, you've got your challenges on a daily basis that you have to deal with. But overall, on reflection, I would say the project is going well, the program, we're sustaining it, and, and overall it's, it's going good. Promotion of the 20th edition of the World Creole Music Festival expected to intensify with stops in the French West Indies, St. Lucia and Barbados over the next few weeks. A team from Discover Dominica Authority just wrapped up their latest promotional trip to St. Martin on the weekend. We had a major promotion in store with them carried live on media in St. Martin and also um, live on Facebook. We also launched the package uh, all expense paid trip to Dominica contest with Real Auto and we have partners coming on board like Winair. Um, and our other media partners in support of that. The promotions continued. I think we had some sleepless nights in St. Martin on the weekend, um, promoting at a lot of our local Dominican um, diaspora persons with, with businesses. So we had a lot of bar stops and some of our restaurant stops still early wee morning hours of Sunday morning. So it was really exciting to be in St. Martin and to see the, the hype of the region is buzzing. I have to say, definitely the region is buzzing and we're building on that momentum to ensure that our patrons here in Dominica, those who will be visiting, would, would definitely have an experience to remember of the destination and of our signature event, the World Creole Music Festival. The US, UK and Canada will also be targeted as promotional efforts continue. CEO of Discover Dominica Authority, Benoit Badwill, says over the last 20 years, the World Creole Music Festival brand has continued to grow in regional and international recognition and prestige. In 2016, the WCMF attracted over 6,500 visitors to Dominica and in excess of 10,000 patrons into the festival city each night. Organizers expect further growth as they embark on promotions across the region. Top corporate partner Digicel has pledged 100,000 EC dollars in cash and another 150,000 in kind to the Creole Festival. This year's festival is carded for 27 to 29th October at the Windsor Park Sports Stadium. A long-standing executive member of the National Youth Council of Dominica wants to become the organization's president to make it more inclusive. Anel Lewis is one of three contenders for the role of president of the NYCD. She is expected to challenge communications officer Paul Barron and female CARICOM Youth Ambassador Karaya John Baptist on September 30 at the Council's General Assembly. Lewis is one of two committee members on the Council's executive and she has been working with the organization for the past seven years. She is presently a project officer at the Council and also serves as the Council's representative on the Prison Justice Committee concerned with vulnerable youth and the Gender Advisory Council concerned with gender equality. Current president of the NYCD, Jaisaya Benoit, is winding up the maximum two terms he can serve in that role. Lewis says being an advocate for youth with special needs and establishing an after-school program are high on her agenda. Another priority is closing the divide between youth and older people. One of my goals is to further target vulnerable communities. And um, sometime in July, I attended a seminar in, uh, in Trinidad. Um, it was a five-day seminar in Trinidad to really learn how to create safe spaces for young people um, within schools and different institutions. So I'd really like to bring that back um, to allow the young people to experience what that is. Um, also, I did a training with Tina Alexander from Lifeline Ministries earlier in the year, which called Peace Together. And um, you know the theme is everything broken is not garbage. And so I really want to be able to put different programs in place so that young people can channel their energies into making a positive impact in their communities, in their country, 
and um, in the world, of course. You're watching Channel 5 News. More news when we return. Watch out, Summer. Mapping is doing it big from 17th July to 31st August with free installation and cash prizes. Here's the drill. New customers sign up for any of our services and pay no installation plus a chance to win cash prizes every week. Existing subscribers pay off your outstanding balance and you too will qualify to win. Sign up, pay up and win, win, win because life is better with mapping. Thanks for staying with us. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Social Services, Family and Gender Affairs, Helen Royer, welcomes a joint approach to poverty reduction. She spoke at the start of a three-day workshop aimed at measuring poverty reduction efforts. The multidimensional approach to poverty reduction project for the Eastern Caribbean started in 2015 and is expected to end in December. Communities expected to benefit include Woodford Hill, Bagatelle, Silver Lake, and Sinico. Royer said globalization and climate change have made communities more vulnerable. The impact of major trends like globalization and climate change are raising vulnerability levels for a number of countries, particularly for small development states. UNDP estimates that between 25 and 30 million people are at risk of relapsing into moderate poverty, either because of loss of employment or because of the impact of natural disaster. There is therefore need for more robust, robust approaches and inclusion of whole of society from assessment to implementation. She described the workshop as timely. It is also our expectation that the training received during these three days will assist us in taking stock of current social protection efforts in Dominica and that the findings will assist the policymakers in providing the best solutions to change the social dynamics of our country. It is also timely and relevant because it is consistent with the government's growth and social protection strategy and the program plan 2017 and 18 of the Ministry of Social Services, Family and Gender. The Dominica Freedom Party is weighing in on the tourism industry, outlining ideas on the importance of setting the vision, ensuring adequate air access to the country, and improving the aesthetics of the build-up areas to match the natural beauty of the country. DFP leader Kent Vital says the key is effective marketing of our product. We firmly believe that we can build a tourism industry that is world-class and world-renowned. Our tourism industry has languished for too long. Though different from what many other Caribbean islands offer, we have something unique, something different, something special that we can offer to the world. Discerning travelers will pay much for our kind of product if we develop the industry wisely. In developing the tourism industry, Vital says we have to keep the interests of Dominicans foremost. He says much more attention must be paid to product development and protecting the natural resource base. He says clearly there are opportunities to develop high-end tourism, agriculture and community tourism, to use the national trail and promote luxury mountain living, and take adv taking advantage of our black sand beaches. The DFP leader said there is a need to partner with foreign investors, but there is much more that can be done to encourage investment by Dominicans. This will involve encouraging the diaspora to invest, encouraging our local people, including our teachers, our nurses, our farmers, our fisher folks, and our traders to invest. To do that, we'll have to encourage cooperation among our people and we'll have to build institutions that can help overcome distrust. We have to start that process with a government that the people can trust. That is why I have chosen to get involved in politics. We need to entrust leadership of this country into song hands. People that are capable, that can listen, and that are honest. That is why the Dominica Freedom Party has been building a capable team a team of honest men and women that can effectively 
lead the way to the heights that our country can reach. In other news, the Electoral Office has addressed the fears over the security of personal information provided under the Multipurpose Identification Card or MPID system. The concern surfaced at the first in a series of town hall meetings by the Electoral Office as part of public awareness campaign on the process of enrollment for the new national identification cards for election purposes. Electoral Office representatives say an entirely new registration exercise is necessary in order to comply with proposed amendments in the electoral laws. The public is assured that information collected previously for the purposes of the MPID is safe. All the information captured during the MPID process remains with the Electoral Office. Okay? It is not, no company in or out of Dominica has possession of that information. The Electoral Commission has all of the data we must capture. Um, as the Chief pointed out, um, I'm just reinforcing, the, as I understand it, the difference between the companies made it possible for us to automatically transfer one from the other. Um, and so there's a need to do it anew. As well as, and importantly, the fact that the legislation triggers the confirmation process. And therefore, um, in order to be compliant with the, under the new system, it is definitely necessary for all electors to be enrolled when once the legislation has been passed. You will, you will appreciate that that exercise was carried out in the absence of the, of the enabling legislation. Okay? So for all of those reasons. However, and importantly, those of you who became enrolled under the MPI, and you can be assured that the electoral office has your data properly secured in the same way that we have all the, the, the votes of previous elections which the law mandates the electoral commission, the electoral office did. It's kept on the lock and key. Under the OECS authorities' proposed multi-purpose identity project, the goal was to produce an ID card for elections purposes. But before the electoral office could complete the enrollment process, that project ran into difficulties with the system's suppliers. The Electoral Commission was of the view that if we were to realize the objective of having a new identification system in place before the constitutionally due date for the next general elections, then it was not possible to await the conclusion of the OECS arrangements. The Commission therefore sought alternative suppliers of identification card systems and settled on a European company which had vast experience with the development and installation of such systems for a number of countries around the world, as well as for several international agencies. In the interim, the Commission urged the passage of appropriate amendments to the election laws so as to facilitate the implementation of the new system. It is widely accepted that the modernization of the electoral system is important to the central democratic principle of one man, one vote. That's news. Sports highlights next with Kenny Williams. We begin with football, where a number of teams will be looking to climb the points table of the 2017 Flow Premier League when the games enter the second week with five matches this weekend. On Friday, Promex Harlem United and Middleham United will kick off things this weekend as they battle each other from 6 p.m. Both teams registered wins in their opening encounter last weekend. In a doublehead on Saturday, Northern Concrete and Steel Bombers will be looking to make it two wins in a row when they take on newly promoted Belfast Limited Mao Soka Strikers in the first match at 3 p.m. In the second match, defending champions Central Cooperative Credit Union Dubla Football Club will be hoping for better results when they come up against Waki Rollers at 5 p.m. 
and on Sunday, Sajiko Southeast will be beaming with confidence after their comfortable win last weekend when they clashed with Bafe State Football Club at 3 p.m. in the first match of another doubleheader, while at 5 p.m., Kelvadaru Exodus Football Club and Petrocaribe Point Michel will be looking for their first points when they battle each other after they both went down in their opening encounter. Meantime, Vice President of Harlem Sports and Community Club, Sheldon Kazemi, has issued an official apology to all and sundry for statements made at a recent annual general meeting of the Dominica Football Association. The disciplinary committee of the DFA recently handed down a six-month ban to Kazemi from all activities organized by the body. I want to begin this letter by extending my deepest apologies for my explicit language directed to you and the other members of your executive body when I said that. You can F off with all your meeting during the AGM held earlier this year. Upon reflection, it was not the best choice of words and was totally unacceptable for the forum in which they were uttered. I also want to apologize to the club representatives present at the meeting, although not asked to do so. Upon reflection, my command of the English language is proficient enough that I could have chosen more appropriate language to express myself without embarrassing my club and other representatives present at the meeting. Now, although Kazimi admits he could have used a different word to express himself, he stands behind the reason for his initial disagreement. After making a suggestion that the Premier League clubs should be given a subvention at the start of the season to offset the operational cost of participating in the league, it was shut down by you, claiming that it was not done anywhere else. I responded that there was no real incentive for players or clubs to participate in the league and you mentioned that we now have players going away on scholarships which you saw as the incentive. To mention that we have players going away on scholarship created the assumption that the initiative to get the said players scholarships was that of the DFA. I know in for a fact that this initiative was spearheaded by the Harlem Sports and Community Club to great offense to that statement. Marpin Sports sought a comment from Kazemi when the information of his ban was made public. However, he declined, saying he wanted to follow protocol in that endeavor. I am aware that from since this infraction, you have taken every opportunity to update the media of my situation in an effort to inform the general public. I have been called several times for statements on the issue and have declined to comment as I believed that I had to resolve the issue before taking it to the media. I am officially informing you that I will now reciprocate by sending a copy of this apology to the media as my official response and comment on the matter. Now some children might have spent their summer on vacation, but for a group of over 60 children, it will be one like no other. On Thursday, over 35 young basketball and 25 footballers here were rewarded for successfully completing a summer program that is likely to help them improve on their game. The programs were organized by Dunstan Maggie Peters for basketball and Kenrick Salka Emanuel for football. We had a nice situation last year in bringing the teams, the, um, the football and the basketball together to enjoy, to allow the kids to enjoy the summer and to engage in something positive as sports. Without the kids, there's no future. So if we look at the present only, that means our future going to be in trouble. So we developing that 25 or the 26 kids, we may not get all as international players. But if we get two out of that 20, that means we feel like we accomplished something. Meantime, basketball coordinator Dunstan Peters says he is looking forward to seeing the athletes in the school and national leagues. That's not the end of it. We're not just going to do a summer program and give certificates. And We're going to be monitoring the kids. We're going to be looking out for them. We want the, the, everybody to remember the names because trust me, you're going to hear about them in the school leagues, either primary school, secondary school, in the leagues, national leagues. These names, I'm telling you, you're going to hear them because we're going to be monitoring them very closely and we're going to be putting things in place. The program started in 2016 and was sponsored by KFC and Fine Foods Inc. this year. The basketball players in the program increased by about 15 members while football was about the same. 
Moving on to cricket, where Jamaica Talawas finished 41 runs ahead of St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots to win the 26th match in the Caribbean Premier League on Wednesday. Batting first, Jamaica scored 157 for the loss of five wickets. Kumar Sangukara top scored with 69 runs, including three sixes and four fours. Rovman Powell added 43. Set 158 to win, Patriots were bowled out for 166 in 17.5 overs. The highest scoring batsman was Evan Lewis with 40 runs from 17 balls. Finally, we can bring you results from the most recent games in the DABA League. In the Division 1, Mass United Sharks beat Digital Clouds 47-38, while in the Premier League, Detroit Blazers escaped with a narrow victory to defeat Flo X-Men 58-55. Blazers' top shooter was Thomas Felix with 22 points, while Simon Joseph scored 20 points for X-Men. And in the Fast Cash Harlem Football League, we can tell you that Young Stars defeated Club Lubia seven goals to two. The semi-finals will be played on Saturday at 7 p.m., where Bootmuth's Young Stars will come up against Quirkside. And on Sunday at 7 p.m., Newtown Juvenile Football Academy will come up against Standards Bar 767 Young Ballers. That's all the sports for now. I am Kenny Williams. Join us next time. Time now for your weather update. Good evening. Welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I am Janelle McPherson. High high pressure system was the dominant feature today. Infrared satellite imagery showed some low level clouds across the Leeward Islands this afternoon. Infrared satellite imagery also shows this area of deep convection associated with major hurricane Irma, currently located 1,760 miles east of the Lesser Antilles. On its current forecast track, Irma is expected just east of the island chain by Tuesday next week. Residents in Dominica are urged to continue to monitor the progress of this system as it approaches the area and to make preparation to protect life and property. Visible satellite imagery today showed partly cloudy to cloudy skies across Dominica. Radar imagery indicated a few scattered showers across parts of the island chain. The weather for tonight, fair to occasionally cloudy with a few scattered showers. Tomorrow, the weather is expected to be partly cloudy to occasionally cloudy with a few scattered showers. Marine conditions tomorrow, slight to moderate, waves peaking up to 5 feet. Looking ahead for the next 3 days, Partly cloudy to occasionally cloudy skies with a few scattered showers and some slightly hazy conditions can be expected. Throughout the Caribbean tomorrow, partly cloudy to cloudy skies and some scattered showers are expected mainly across the southern portion of the islands as a tropical wave traverses the area. On the International Cities forecast, partly cloudy conditions are expected in New York and Beijing thunderstorm activity for Miami and Caracas, and cloudy skies expected for the City of London. Sunrise tomorrow at 5.53 a.m. and sunset at 6.18 p.m. Please stay up to date with weather information by visiting our website at weather.gov.dm or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Thank you for viewing and have a good night. To end the news, the headlines again. Dominicans want to prepare for Hurricane Irma, even if the weather system is about a week away. Investor confidence in New Jungle Bay remains high in spite of competition. And $250,000 in cash and kind from the main sponsor as Creole Festival promotions intensify. Feel free to contact us at news at marpin2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Idona John Baptist, and to all our viewers around the world, thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow.